All right, guys, here we are. We're in the backyard. It's a nice fall day. Weather's actually pretty good. It's uh, been sunny this past weekend. Friday was an absolute awful day. Uh, but here we are. It's Sunday. So I got some work to do on my verticals, my inverted L, mostly for 160. I've got a uh, the far end has fallen through some branches. So I've got to go through and shoot another line, get it up a little higher, and pull it back up. So it's actually kind of a simple task. The hardest part is we're going to have to be using a slingshot uh, to get the line up there. Uh, I've done it before. It's a little breezy today, so hopefully it won't be too bad. There's the Mosley up there. You can see that. Looks pretty good. So here we are. We're going to go work on this a little bit. And hopefully I don't poke my eye out or hit myself in the head with the weight. Um, we'll go through kind of the stuff that you're going to need. I'm going to get it laid out and give it a little quick tour. It's about 1 o'clock p.m. So starting to cloud up a little bit. Hopefully it, uh, it won't be too bad. It's warmed up some, so it won't be quite as hard to work in. It was, it was rather chilly this morning. It was about 42 degrees when I got up. So it's, uh, leaves are starting to fall off the trees. Finally, it's uh, the fourth. And the leaves are just starting to turn and come off the trees. So that'll make what we need to do a little bit easier. So let's get, uh, get a couple things squared away and we'll get to playing. I got here is it's a little bag I got at I think the radio show maybe radio show one year a couple of years ago or something I don't know it's like a little book bag but it's good to keep this type of uh, wire antenna uh, stuff in it's uh, so really what you got I got a little plain old box here for uh, to keep weights in and I'm about out of weights. The bigger weights is what you're really going to need. I have to use fishing weights. If you got whatever you got around the house, that's part of being a ham, is using what you got. So we could do that. We just, uh, problem is you want to be careful. If it's coming down through trees and limbs and all that, you don't want, you don't want it to hang. So that's something to be worried about. If you got something, a great big hook, you know, loop in it, like a big wash or a big nut, you don't want you don't want it to get hung in something and never be able to get it down and then when you're out there walking around or you're out cutting grass or something of that nature you end up hitting yourself in the head nobody wants to get hit in the head when they're not expecting it nobody wants to get hit in the head when they are expecting it so just that we have the standard ah oh crap zepco 33 I got this off Amazon, uh, I think maybe I spent 30 bucks on it, if that, I don't remember, it's been a couple of years, but you get this at any uh, Bass Pro Shops, Capella's or anything like that. It's probably going to be cheaper at Walmart, whatever you like to do. Back there in the sporting goods department, another thing we have is our handy dandy slingshot. Also comes from Walmart, or you can get it at any... Uh, sporting goods store. They got all that back there, the hunting and fishing stuff. So all this stuff is available there. Uh, then another thing you're going to need is probably some high contrast type string. Uh, I like pink and I got some of the orange here. Uh, this is on a little spool. I don't remember where I got this or if it came like this. This is for like marking lines. And this is back there in the rope department. What you want to do, you shoot the line up there with the fishing line. And you may want to use some type of colored line, not not the the absolute clear. Um, I mean, go through the line that comes on on the reel first, of course. But you, uh, this is the Cajun line, Red Lightning, 14 pound test. You can go a little bigger. Uh, you don't want to go any bigger than 
damage the reel unless you absolutely have to. The good, good part about all this, all this stuff isn't all that expensive, so uh, if you tear it up. A whole nother uh, package of uh, 17 pound, number 18 braided mason line is what that's called. I think this came from Lowe's. I like Lowe's, there's one close to me. Whatever store you like, feel free to use. Um, so you keep some extra stuff like that in the bag. I don't know what, I think all this trash was, uh, that's from uh, some wire I used and just when I was cleaning up, you just stuff it back in the bag so you can get out of there. And look, I found another way working around. So that's pretty much the stuff you need to start stringing wire antennas up. It doesn't take much. You probably want a little practice with the slingshot. Uh, they make some of these. The slingshot with the reel together, uh, married up. There's like a rod that comes out the bottom and has this mounts. I have, unless you actually have a fishing rod mount, these things don't seem to stick all that well to anything. So what I've done is I pull it out. I'll tie it on. I'll hit the button and just pull enough out, and then just set this on the ground and make sure it's pointed up you know kind of like this on the ground so when you shoot and you want it facing the way you're going so when it pulls out it's not trying to flip over and then that that weight comes back at you or the line breaks or anything like that so that's a handy tip so you don't have to marry it up to here it's probably a little bit easier if you don't uh, from the extra weight and all that all right, that's pretty much all you need, so let's get to shooting some lines. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is come up here and let this rope down, and I'm trying not to get snake bit. I mean, you might see the rope. You see it over there tied by the tree. And this is the line that See, it's down real low. We want to get that up to the top of the tree. So we're going to have to let that go. I got some new rope to use. So be careful. Watch out for snakes. I don't like the snakes. I don't like spiders either. Well, they're not. That was hanging up. Apparently it fell down. It's okay. Uh, this is out of the tree. <laughs> yeah, that was almost a bad day. Make things a little bit easier. When you can. The good thing about the Dacron rope is it doesn't, uh, like a nylon rope, the sun starts getting it, it gets, can't quite maneuver it through some of these knots, but I said that. I don't know, this is being a pain. It's moving. There we go. And we'll let this fall. And we'll reuse this. This is the big stuff. Oh. There it goes. The blue here is the inverted L. And you probably might be able to see that, but. You're just a loop and a rope, that white rope through the tree. Oh, I feel it going. To hold it up there, and it's not tied, it's just a loop. So we'll just pull this back.
<laughs> First try. What's that? You see that lamb moving? That's where that loop is. Here we go. And we save the roof and the truck. So we're gonna let this dangle right there. So now that's out of our way. All right. Now let's go get the slingshot. We'll get a line up top of that tree, pull some lead line back and uh, some rope. We'll see what we can do. Slingshot and a reel and some weed line, which we're not going to need quite yet, so we'll set it right there. Now, looking up, since we're going to pull the lead line and I want to conserve as much rope as I can, I'm going to shoot from this side to go over. So this will be there, and we'll tie that lead line, take the weight off, and I should have brought some tape. <clears throat> to help with the knot. We won't make too big of a knot because we want to get it through the limbs and okay without it snagging. Um, so that's going to go over the tree this way. We'll pull the lead line back over so the pink will be draped over the top. And then uh, we'll pull the new rope we have over till we get it to the ground and we'll attach it to the end of that and uh, then pull it back. That way we can save as much rope as we can. All right. So in that case, that top limb right there, that's the highest point. That's what we would like. Uh, well, we kind of want to get it where it's not going to fall down and keep falling like I did in the past. So we're going to try it. Part of the problem is I can't get clear over there because of all the brush. So I'm going to have to be like back over here and come over and then finding this is going to be the hard part. I think I can get it straight over there. So we're going to hit the button. Uh, kind of like to have it on this side of me. Set it down like so. So it's free. Take the line and you want to go in the fork. So when you pull it up, it's got kind of a guide and it won't get caught on you or anything else. So, now, if I do this the first time, I'm gonna be quite impressed with myself. It's pretty good. Oh, and this is the hard part, I see it swinging. You gotta be careful. All right, let's reel it back in. More. I also like having the eye pointed down in line with everything. Uh, there it is, swinging. All right, let's say the third time is the charm. So we'll see. It's starting to get a little worn out. Down down through the fork. Take a little step. I 
we got over there. Oh, we just gotta find a find, try to find it. There it is. Ah, uh, let's go take a look. Well, that's a little too tall. Let's see if we can pull it back some. Sometimes you can pull it back and get it out some of that other stuff. Here it is. Good job. We did a good job. We got it swinging. And once it started swinging good, we just let go. And it came down. Now I can't freaking see. But I know it's around here. Somewhere. All right. pull that out with the lead line. Now this is another place where two people makes it a lot easier. But I've done this before by myself. And uh, it's doable. I'll just reel her in. There she goes. string pink stuff is heavier than the fishing line so you don't want it to fall back in and it foliage if you can help it so just keep pulling wriggling down where you can mess with it and until you're ready to go I would leave that tied up until after you get your other rope on it just because it's got some weight there if the wind kicks up and I end up pulling it and we'll be right back where we were we don't want that crap so I'm gonna come up here this a little bit more just make me feel better and let's go get the other rope what this is is a uh, 3 16 Dacron braid this is a uh, 500 foot spool I think I bought this at well I know I bought it at a ham fest now which one it might have been Charlotte um, but the Dacron is really good stuff I think this actually came from the wireman which is another Fantastic South Carolina company. I've used some other rope from uh, DX Engineering has it uh, May Strand or something like that. I use that for another project. And I really like that the braids real tight. Uh, the Dacron, the kind of the outside seems a little loose at times, but it's real good stuff. Uh, UV protected. Uh, doesn't really seem to mold or mildew or anything like that. Uh, when you tie it up, you can come back a year later. And it feels exactly the same, unlike some of the nylon rope will 
uh, kind of gum up. You can't get it to move or anything like that. This doesn't do it. So taking knots apart makes it a lot easier. So we got the string in the ear, uh, the lead line. So we're going to go tie this to the other side of it, pull that through, tie it up to the other rope, and pull that back up. And I think we're going to be pretty much done. So we're going to get a little quick drink, wet our whistle, and we'll come back. All right. This is neat as possible. Let's see if we can get it out of. Yeah, there we go. What we want to do, at the least resistance. close to line to it as we can. See what I mean about the green, the ink? All right, so we're just gonna go slow. You see uh, coming off the real spool like that? That's beautiful. Ah, I can't ask for much better than that. And slow and easy. Let's follow it up. Spool. Look at that. Piece of cake. Oh man, like we're professionals. Professional what? I don't know, but we're professionals. It takes three times to get it through the tree, but this is actually the aggravating part. If you had another person, you know, helping with the spool over there. Okay, and there's our mound of uh, twine. I'm just kind of lay it over top of it the rope there. So when it comes back up, at least opportunity for it to get tangled. Now, rinse and repeat. We go down to this spool, and we're just gonna pull back up. And I'll have to go get a knife to cut it when we're ready. So let's go ahead, let's get this out of the way. It's gonna trip over it. Squirrels been after the nuts. All right. So now we're just gonna kind of same deal. Slow and steady wins the race. You see, there's the horizontal radiator coming up. And we don't want it terribly tight. We want it snug. We want to be able to. See some of the let it kind of settle. The blows, if they're not in sync, we're not gonna break too many branches and uh, we'll give it some room to stretch and we won't damage any of the feed, which we'll go look at in a little bit. Alright guys, that's pretty much all the maintenance I need to do on that inverted L. Something that's been bothering me for a while, I just haven't had a chance to do it. I typically like doing this type of stuff during fall, after the leaves fall off. We've had kind of a warm beginning to fall. So they're actually just starting to turn, the leaves are just starting to turn colors. And the rain's gonna knock some of them. So, actually all in all, it wasn't too bad today. Just kind of unusual. That normally it's real pain. It, it took us a few times to get the lines in the tree. But we got it. 
everything else went smoothly and it's up it's a little too taut looking over at the feet but that's something we can adjust later then on the other side so i got a little bit more cleaning up to do let me go ahead and do that and maybe we'll go inside and kind of talk about it it's starting to cloud up here it might start to rain i don't want to get all this stuff inside before it does that so we may have to finish everything inside we'll see